Breaking News on WFLA Now. Hey everybody, News Channel, it's J.B. Buno here with Storm Team Mate Meteorologist Amanda Holly live with you here on stream. We are about to take you live to a press conference regarding the depressions that have opened up in Pasco County, Florida. This is Drone 8 video from a short time ago showing the uh, depressions that have opened up right here in this neighborhood in Pasco County. It is scary because of this ground that is just breaking up here uh, near these homes and near the roadway that you see there too. Uh, everybody, we are moments away from a press conference getting underway. In fact, we can show you kind of live there where the press conference is going to be taking, taking place. Amanda Holly, who's been talking a lot about the depressions on WFLA.com and the free WFLA app, joining us live. Amanda, we are really anxious to hear from the Pasco County Emergency Management Director about what is going on here in this neighborhood. Yeah, I'm interested to see what kind of surveys they've done and um, just analyzing them to see if they're going to continue to grow if they have any idea if they're going to continue to grow um it's a it's a big deal obviously all of these depressions are next to these homes and the homeowners are curious let's listen in everybody hoa has the hoa has hired a geological firm um, they came out yesterday they did some gpr around the site while they were out here, we, I asked them if they would, behind us, uh, go over the roadway because we've had some activity over there. So he ran his GPR over that area and a pre pre preliminary report says that there is a large void under the roadway. Um, he says it's approximately 17 feet wide. We don't have a depth yet or a length because he only went in one direction. So out of an abundance of safety, uh, we decided to go ahead and close the roadway down We've met with the HOA. We've met with the residents that are being affected here. Um, they were very happy and more cordial to us and agreed with us 100%. So with the activity still ongoing, uh, our depressions are growing. We're up to 36 of them now. Uh, we're, we cannot put anybody in the area to do the actual GPR. So the company that is doing this is rigging up a tether system in order for them to have the ability to pull the GPR back and forth and keeping everybody out of harm's way. So when that is completed, the HOA will get a report of what is actually going on in the site. Uh, we can't tell, we don't know. Uh, we're here for support for the HOA, we're here for support for our citizens. So like I said, in abundance of safety, we've gone ahead and closed down the roadway. And I'll open it up for questions right now. Well, unfortunately, Pasco County, we own the road surface. The HOA actually owns the dirt and ground underneath it. However, because we're going to have to make the repair, we're going to go ahead and fill that void in and hopefully mitigate it. Time-wise, we do not have a time span or, or duration of how long this is going to take. It's going to be dependent on the report that the HO gets and, and hands to us so we can work with our engineers and road, work, and, road and bridge. Well, these houses over here, um, this house has a, a depression behind it. They filled it in and mitigated it. The house across two houses down also had a depression in front of it. They've mitigated it. There's pockets throughout. You, you, you need to remember this area at one time was a flowing river. They built on top of a flowing river and connected the land together to build the houses. And I have a saying that if you take from Mother Nature, Mother Nature is going to take it back eventually. So we can't tell when holes are going to pop up, depressions are going to pop up, anomalies are going to pop up. It's very hard to tell in this area. Are you guys evacuating any houses or anything? No, ma'am. The building inspectors have been out here. They're all structurally safe. There's no integrity problems. The homeowners feel comfortable staying. We come out here every day, we talk with them, we ask them, have you seen anything different, any cracks or anything like that? And so far, they all feel very safe. Uh, talking to people yesterday, you know, I think they think of, of what you guys had to deal with a couple of years ago. That's the image everybody has in their head, a lot of people have in their head. But that's not exactly what you're dealing with here, right? No, it's exactly the opposite. The, the sinkhole that happened in Land Lakes, in Lake Paget area, was a catastrophic sinkhole. And what, what I mean by that, a catastrophic sinkhole is large, it opens, and it swallows everything in one fail swoop. Over here, there are little pocket depressions. 
I can't classify them as sinkholes, but they're depressions that are over that active cave system. So that cave system might be collapsing a little bit. They might be interconnected underneath and where one opens up, another one underneath there might open up beside it. So we cannot tell until they actually get this report done. How big is the void? What are we looking at? How far is it going to go? Time, distance, and speed is basically what it's going to come down to. Can you talk a little bit more about the data that you got yesterday from the ground penetrative radar? I mean, is that, you don't know, I guess, how deep the pockets are? Or well, the when, they did, when they did the scan over ground, they found the void. It shows up on their system and will show a void. But we're unable to tell how deep or actually how long it's going to be. He went only in one direction to the west. He never came through this side of the roadside yet. So, but when he got done, he went back to his office, he pulled the information that he had, and he gave us a pre preliminary that you have a 17 foot void underneath there. And that's when he says, I can't tell you how deep or how long until I finish doing the rest of the work and I'm able to put all the data points together. So would it be like 17 feet like into the roadway then? Can you kind of like- It's 17 feet in length this way, and from where he started, and no, it's actually going back the opposite way where my vehicle's parked. So he went 17 feet that way. So he, he, he says there's a void underneath there. It covers apparently the entire road width, but he did not say coming this way. He just started, when he started at, there was the void. So. But, do we have the size of this one now? Uh, it was 25 feet like two days ago. Do we have a better? It's grown approximately about another two and a half foot. We've come out here and marked it every day, and every day we come out and mark it again because the paint's gone. And when the paint goes away, that means it's either sloughing off or it's still more activity in there. The one to the right that we're talking about still has water in it. So we were thinking that maybe, we were hoping that it was just possibly rainwater, but it's a brackish type water, so it's more condensed. Conduce, conducing of it being uh, aquifer water. Any of the 36 depressions threatening any structures? Not at this time. They're all located within this small area. Some of the ones that like the one over there and the one back there, we have counted that in there also, but they're not structurally endangering anything right now. Sir, could you explain a little bit about how some of those, um, the holes we're seeing might actually be one under the ground? Right. So you have a hole open up on one side, you have a hole open up on another side, or a depression, however you want to state it. And underneath there, that might be one entire cavern, one entire cave. So all it's doing is the clay layer that's in the, the uh, I just lost my train of thought. The clay layer that's on the land, what happens after a while, it's very caustic in this cave. So that limestone is continually eroding away. So it gets to a point that with all the rain that we have, saturates the ground and there's a clay layer and then another sand layer. And that clay layer finally says, I'm done and breaks away. So you might get a little opening here and then with the weight over here, you might get that weight over there and it does the same exact thing. Yeah, like how deep we're talking? Right. I, not at this time, I don't. Do you think that the road will start caving in over here? Do you have to let it, um continue to cave in if so before you can even come since it's active well once we get the report back and we see how far is that void below the road surface and what is it going to take to mitigate it that's why we close it because we have school buses that go through here we have garbage trucks cement mixers dump trucks and all that excess weight is just putting pressure on it i, I don't even feel comfortable putting a passenger car on there and it's not because i think it's going to collapse it's just the thought of it having to potential to collapse. Sidewalk okay though? Yes. Yes. Uh, for, I mean, urging people not to walk through here, you know. We've urged, we've urged the citizens. We've had talked with very many. I talked with the HOA president. We're getting a lot of lookers that want to come up here and drive up here and they stop and they go wandering along. And we've told them, you don't, do not do this. It's, you have a potential to fall in. I fell in just standing on the ground by itself. The HOA president yesterday, I was having a conversation with him walking and I turned, he's gone, he fell in. So the lay, that whole area is very unstable and we're urging the citizens and the residents just to stay away from the area. What was that like? To fall in? Yeah. 
Um, I used a bunch of words I shouldn't have and grabbed the fence and held on. Yeah, it was, and it was sudden. I mean, I was talking to my, my, one of my coordinators and next thing you know, the ground just gave way. And I was about, about almost knee deep. So that's the potential we have out here right now. Andy, can you spell your last name for us? F-O-S-S-A. And your title again? Emergency Management Director. And I realize you're not an engineer, but how do you mediate something like this when it's done? That's going to be up to the HOA and what they decide to do. They could, they could dredge it out and try leveling it. They could try filling it. Um, one's a lot more expensive than the other. So it, it's going to be up to them. Any other questions? There's no pattern to it whatsoever. Uh, it started on the 13th, August 13th. And every day, except for one day in the last week and a half, we've had a phone call about them. So they're just popping open, and meaning that we'll come out here. We came out here yesterday and found, I think, three more that had opened up. So they just, they just pop up on their own. There's, there's no rhyme or reason why they're doing it. And they're still active and growing, is that yes. accurate? Yes. So we have no idea how long this will be shut down? No. We're hoping as soon as we get the report, and HOA gives us a plan with them that the county will come up with their plan and the repair will start right away. When should that report be expected? I, I do not know. It's usually about a week. They have said, and, and we have talked with them, they have said they are making this a priority just because of the size and, and the activity that's going on so to get us a report, well not us, get the HOA a report in. So hopefully it will be within the week. Um, I, I heard from one homeowner, I, I think they had some Their house. Should they be concerned, and should people be worried that they could there could be holes underneath their house? Absolutely. The way this area has it has a very large sinkhole area. It's been proven. There's 354 residents out here. Out of the 354, 187 of these residents have been sinkhole remediations. So this area is prone for that, and especially during the wet, wet part of the season like we're in now. Their depressions are more prone to pop up. And we're urging homeowners to call emergency management if they have concerns or questions. We try to keep a historical data on everything, so that way we can follow patterns and trends. We work closely with USF. They were out here yesterday. Um, they did a great job flying the area, gridding it out, and they got some actual excellent topography on here. So we work in conjunction with them, and, and it works out quite any other questions? I'm over here. When they shut this down. Yes, ma'am. And now we all live here. Right there, is there going to be somebody at the end of the road that is going to stop the golfers from coming in? Because they do. And when they pull in, they're going to turn around in our driveways and on our lawn. The trash trucks are going to have to have some kind of arrangement. How are they going to come in and get the trash? Well, the, I'm sure the, the trash company will be able to back in and pull out. But as for the onlookers, I cannot control the onlookers. Okay, so we just, if they get in here and get walking around, we call the cops? Put, yeah, call, so, put, call the sheriff's office. Yeah. We've spoken to them already this morning yeah. to let them know about the road. We've also spoken with the HOA because this HOA has a no curb parking policy, and we're going to have these cars okay. on the roadway for a little while and not to ticket them because we're in a... But we don't call one, we just call the sheriff's department. Yeah, just call the sheriff's department. The yes, ma'am. I w I'm, unfortunately, I wish I had a way to control it. I oh, can. Again, I'll call the sheriff's department, <laughs> but, you know, I don't want to see him get hurt. Yes, ma'am, I agree 100%. 100%. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else, any other questions? All right, with that, I'll conclude it. And you Everybody, WF Lane House, J.B. Buno, Amanda Holly with you here live on stream. That, that, what you just heard from there was actually a, a neighbor, a woman in this neighborhood asking questions, just, you know, uh, give us a little bit of an idea as to what is going on in this neighborhood. You see there on the bottom of your screen, 36 depressions have opened up in this neighborhood in Hudson, Florida, in Pasco County in the Tampa Bay area. 
And that's 16 more than our last update. Our last update, I believe, was a couple of days ago here on WFLA Now and on the WFLA app. Amanda, we were talking about how significant it was at the time. We had four new depressions opening. Now we have 16 additional depressions Mm -hmm. opening up. We're at a total of 36. You can hear it in that neighbor's voice. This is starting to get pretty alarming here. She was talking about kids roaming around in the neighborhood. They have to close this street because of a depression underneath that roadway in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. This is becoming sort of a dangerous situation, something that's really starting to alarm area residents. It is because they said, too, they're not sure if more will continue to keep opening up. They are using ground penetrating radar, he said, which is good because they can detect depressions that are under the ground that have not opened up yet, but they sounded like they haven't done a very large search just yet. It was just over that portion of the roadway, which is why they closed it. Uh, but a 17 foot wide depression under the road, that's that's huge. Um, and, and there could be more if Ever- he hasn't been done yet. Everybody, Storm Team Meet Meteorologist Amanda Holly has done a lot of work in the last week about depressions and how they form. And she has talked extensively about the amount of rain that we've gotten in the last 20 days or so here in the Tampa Bay area and that kind of being the the straw that broke the camel's back, so mm-hmm. to speak, when it comes to the amount of precipitation. Again, depressions form, as Amanda has noted, and I've been paying close attention to what you've been teaching us, Amanda, but it forms over tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years, right? So a long period of time. Is, is that about it's natural. right? Yeah. It's natural. It's, it's a natural process for sinkholes to form. I mean, there are tunnels across the entire state of Florida under the ground. That's our aquifer, and he mentioned that as well. This water that is likely sitting there in some of those depressions is the aquifer water because um, it has opened up. It's it's a passageway now to it. Yeah, and, and this is a period that has been going on for, for way long of a time, but now just all this rain that we have had accumulate over the last uh, 20 days or so here in the Tampa Bay area has really been detrimental for this particular topography in Pasco County because of the, all these depressions that are now forming. Guys, 36 I mean, when you heard that number, Amanda, were, were you as kind of like taken aback? Like you had to almost like, re- like review Doubled. your notes and be like, yeah. hey, 36, we, we, we just... I think that we were just on WFLA now a couple days ago talking about 20. Right. And uh, he's been. T- he said they started August 13th and they've had a couple more every single day and they have to go back out there. And the ones that are there are growing. So we've got more opening up and the ones are that are there are getting bigger. So um, very scary situation for the homeowners, but as well as the neighbor said, you know, it's scary for the people that are coming in to look. He, the um, emergency director there said that he fell in as he was doing his survey. So scary situation and dangerous as well. Yeah, everybody, uh, WF Lainey's Channel 8, home to the most extensive fleet of drones in the Bay Area. And this is actually video here from Drone 8 taken yesterday. Drone 8 able to not, you know, a, a helicopter, Amanda, we've noted this before uh, i feel like we a chopper is going to give us a lo- large scale aerial view look at drone 8 getting right into this particular depression here showing us some of the holes that have formed again these not technically classified as sinkholes just yet they're still technically classified as depressions but nonetheless these are holes that are forming in the ground right next to roadways and homes where kids live and it's just this has become really alarming for the community Everybody, for for those of you who were just paying attention to the press conference a short time ago, that wasn't just for the media. There were neighbors who congregated here on the street asking questions, wanting to know from, again, Andrew Fossa, that is the Pasco County Emergency Management Director, uh, who was there giving an update to folks in this community. So um, this is something that has has gotten the attention of, of this particular neighborhood in Hudson, Florida, and for good reason. I mean, look at this, Amanda. This is a lot of of holes that are just opening up due to all the rain that we've had (laughs) they're deep holes and they're filled with water too um he mentioned that this community was built on top of a river they filled it in but um like he mentioned nature that water underground still has to go somewhere so these passageways continue to open up um we've had so much rain this year it's not like the aquifers and the tunnels are empty we've actually had too much rain so the water sitting on top of the surface is too heavy that i mean think about how heavy water is all of that sitting on top of the the surface and just the saturated ground it gets really heavy and um if there's tunnels under the ground, the ground just it's gonna collapses. Cave. It's mm-hmm. going to cave it's in. exactly right. Right. And you were noting uh, they had to close a roadway because of a 17-foot depression. Uh, I, I don't That's know. That's wide. We That's, don't know how deep it is. That, right. That's big. That's big. Um, 
uh, I'm not an expert. You obviously um, uh, have been talking about depressions and done several write-ups for WFLA.com about it. But again, uh, 17-foot gap underneath uh, the surface here. Um, that 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 just that seems very large to me. And you could hear it um, in Andrew Foss's voice when he was talking about how yeah. he had to, you know, they don't cro- close a, a road lightly. And again, it was because of a 17-foot depression, 17 feet wide, uh, under this Hole, particular roadway. Under, right. under the road. Right. Um, yeah. And you know, that's an active road. And I just talked about how heavy the ground is just because it's saturated. But think about when you add a car or a school bus on top of that, it's just extra weight. And if that happens to collapse, the depression starts to sink. That's a scary situation. Hopefully it would be a slow sink, but they don't know. So um, all of the depressions have opened up relatively slowly this time around, which is good. Um, it's not sudden, but still the ground is sinking. Everybody, um, I'm going to pr- try to answer some questions for you. Amanda is going to try to answer some questions for you. So if you were joining us on WFLA's Facebook page, on Facebook Live, we're here for you trying to answer some questions. Aid on your side, always committed to making sure that uh, you guys have every little bit of information that you need to know. The first question coming in from Judy Johnson in the comments section asking, um, what particular neighborhood, what particular development is this in? In Hudson, Florida, it is in the Lakeside Woodlands community. Lakeside Woodlands in the Hudson, Florida area. Um, I believe that we had some street names, and the street names are not on my current list of notes. Um, but, um, but yeah, Lakeside Woodlands community in Hudson, Florida. That is in Pasco County, the Tampa Bay region of Florida. Any other questions that we can get to? Um, uh, Cliff asking, Amanda, uh, this community was built... Uh, uh, on a river. Is that what I heard? That is correct. I believe that's exactly what he said. It was a, a known river and they kind of filled it in um, or at least paved on top of it. And um, I don't know if he meant that that became the aquifer or if they built it on top of the known aquifer. Um, so I'm not, I'm, I would need some clarification there, but it did sound like he was well aware that there were, you know, tunnels. The aquifer runs under this area. Uh, Ray Kaufman asking, is that really news? Florida's mean elevation is only 100 feet above sea level. Ray, I'm going to kind of jump in on that one because if if this was in a state park, you know, thousands and thousands of acres of land, uh, I don't even think that... um, that a depression would really pop up on a on, on radar for at least the Department of Agriculture or the applicable you know department for for state government or or even the federal government if it's a national park. But um, the reason why this is news is because it's happening in a neighborhood. It's happening near homes. It's happening perhaps underneath homes. It's happening underneath roadways as we just had confirmed today. So uh, there is the the potential risk of more of these opening up. And could the next one be beneath someone's home? Or has one already opened up beneath someone home, someone's home, and we just don't have, you know, an, an idea as to when the ground is going to be, you know, give, we we just don't know. There's so many questions, and I think that that's what makes this so, um, you know, so so intimidating for people in this neighborhood is because they just they just don't know what's going to be happening in the days and weeks to come. Again, um, this is uh, an update on this story: 36 depressions total, 16 more than the original total that was reported. Uh, on WFLA.com and the WFLA News Channel 8 app out of Pasco County. And he Uh, did say too, JB, that, you know, some of them have opened up in people's backyards. I know we have a lot of footage from these in the open fields, but they have filled in some already that have been in people's backyards. So you mentioned we don't know if there's one under the house. We we really don't. If they're in the backyards, why wouldn't there be one under the house? Yeah, um, um... Uh, yeah, some some of the folks joining us for that, I'm recognizing some of the names from our Michael Draca trial coverage. Uh, yeah, everybody, if you were joining us from the Michael Draca trial coverage, I, I did not get a bite to eat as we were talking about because it, it was a lunch break uh, in the Michael Draca trial coverage. They are still, I'm, I think I'm watching that video. Yes, they're still in uh, in lunch break for uh, the Draca trial in Pinellas County, the manslaughter trial there, of course. And um, and so that has not resumed yet, everybody. But uh, no, we are here with breaking news out of Pasco County with the uh, depressions opening up 16 more, Amanda. I mean, my, my, my goodness. Um, yeah. People noting, asking about evacuations. There's no evacuations. The only, um, the only thing that they have done, uh, as far as, um, y- you know, as far as what Andrew Foss the emergency management director has noted is close that roadway. Um, I didn't catch a name on that roadway. But uh, I'll be able to get it to you guys. It's I believe be... Eagle is on scene now as well. Oh yeah, let's go. Let's go to Eagle. Um, let's go to live the Eagle Eight HD. Thanks, Amanda. You're welcome. Um, let's see here. I believe that if we hit this button, 
And then we hit this button. Look at that. Live. This is live, everybody, from Eagle 8 HD flying over these depressions in Pasco County. Again, noting that this is the, um, I believe, the lakes, yes, Lakeside Woodlands community in Hudson, Florida. Eagle 8 HD was on another story, just arrived on scene moments ago. Amanda uh, noting that we were, uh, had just arrived, and here we are. Um, if you're in the community, uh, Lake, Lakeside Woodlands community, and if you hear a chopper buzzing overhead, that's Eagle 8 HD flying over these depressions. Again, the, uh, the update on this story, 36 depressions total, 16 more than the original total that was reported to us two days ago, which means that we have nearly doubled the, the amount of depressions that have opened up here in Pasco County. Uh, Jessica asking this question. I don't know if this question was asked, Amanda, but perhaps uh, there's the road closure that they were just zooming in on. Uh, perhaps you can get this, um, this, this question or I don't know if this was addressed at all. Um, Jessica asking, do you think it will open in other parts of Pasco County? Well, like I mentioned yesterday, all of Florida really is um, this limestone, this karst terrain, which is um, easily dissolved in acidic water. And as I mentioned yesterday, as the rainwater percolates through the ground, the natural water cycle there, it um, passes through dissolving leaves and animal carcasses and everything like that. So that's just kind of embedded within the ground. And when it passes through that stuff, it becomes acidic. So um, we're, wa we're kind of washing away the limestone that's under the ground there. And... Um, kind of lost my train of thought there. What was the question, JB? No, the question was, are there <laughs> other areas of Pasco right. County that could be vulnerable? Right. So back to that, all of Florida is made up of this limestone and this part of Pasco County maybe saw a little extra rainfall than um, other areas, but certainly other parts of Pasco County would be vulnerable. A lot of places across the state are, are vulnerable to these sinkholes, but Tampa in particular seems to have quite a few congregated right in this area, especially north of Tampa, um, Hernando County, um, Citrus County, and then up into north central Florida as well. So yes, the answer to your question is it's, it's possible. I'm not going to say it's going to happen, but um, he mentioned in his press conference that they have there is no rhyme or reason, but I'd be curious to know if um, these connected under the ground, if, if it was one time or a couple different tunnels um, and there's just depressions forming in certain parts of the tunnel because after all it is connected to that aquifer. Uh, Shana noting on the WFLA Facebook page all this rain not helping at all. Yeah everybody Amanda's got some got some great stuff on WFLA.com and the WFLA app to search for the word depressions you'll be able to see some of her stuff that that uh, that we've done here on WFLA now and that she's done for our app. Um, uh, reading reading just some more of the of the questions here, everybody. Yeah, people like Elizabeth noting that this is scary. Uh, Anne Marie noting that she used to live in, in Lakeside Woodlands. Everybody, this is live uh, from Eagle 8 HD, currently hovering right over this community. Again, that's had uh, 36 depressions open up, 36 of them, uh, 16 more than the original amount that was, uh, that was reported. Um, continuing to grow, continuing to add more each day, he said. I mean, he said um, they've been growing, what did he say, two and a half feet per day, a couple of them? I think so, yep, yep. So they're, they're, this, is, um, this is something that's happening right now, everybody. Um, and it's, it's under the surface, right, Amanda? So it is. I, as much as we are zooming in on the holes that have kind of you know, formed here, I mean, this is happening like underneath the ground right now with all of, you know, all the science that you've been noting in your uh, in, in your previous reports. Yep, it's under the ground and we don't know how deep. In different areas of North Florida and Central Florida, the aquifer is at different depths. Um, it can reach down to 100 feet, even more than that in some spots. These don't look particularly deep right now, which is great. Um, but as he mentioned, the ground penetrating radar hasn't proved how deep they are just yet they can they can see how wide they are um that are still under the ground that the depressions that haven't started forming but we just don't know how deep everybody i'm just uh, extending our stream window here so you don't lose us oh you might have lost us actually because i missed it by two seconds hopefully you guys don't lose us we're going to try to stay uh live here on wfla now but if we do lose you guys we're going to be having team coverage tonight on wfla.com and the wfla news channel 8 app um, again, this is live from Eagle 8 HD. I believe that that's, um, is that one of our reporters? But we have several reporters down there on the ground right now, um, getting ready for team coverage here tonight on WFLA News Channel 8. 
Uh, Tracy Wilson asking, where is this in Pasco? It is in Pasco. Um, it is in Hudson, excuse me. Hudson, Florida, in the Lakeside. Um, it is in the Lakeside Woodlands community. Any final notes here before we wrap up, Amanda? I think I think we've covered a lot of it. Um, again, it's a scary situation. It's an ongoing situation. They're continuing to survey the area with that ground penetrating radar so they can see where there are voids in the ground that haven't opened up yet. Didn't sound like they were done with their surveys. Um, hopefully, they'll continue to expand their search a little bit. Um, but this is an ongoing situation. Wouldn't be surprised if we saw some more open up. And as we do, we will continue to update you. I want to address some of the commenters. Somebody asked about the missing firefighters out of Jacksonville. Still no um, meaningful uh, update, something that you want to hear out of, uh, out of the Jacksonville area regarding the two missing firefighters who haven't been seen in five, six days now. Uh, if we hear anything else about that, we'll be live on stream here. I promise you we will be live on stream here immediately. And then everybody asking about the uh, Michael Draca trial. Uh, that trial is ongoing right now. They have resumed. I believe that that stream is underway. Um, I will not be part of that stream this afternoon, I don't believe, but it is going on right now on the WFLA app and WFLA's Facebook page. I'm going to be working on a couple of different other stories, as is Amanda Holly here as we get going here in WFLA now. But again, you can read more on this story by going to WFLA.com, the WFLA app. You can read more on some of the um, some of the reports that um, that Amanda has done regarding how these depressions are forming. Uh, and if you live in um, Pasco there. County, there is a great article on WFLA.com as well to see if you live near um, some of these sinkholes. Uh, Kelsey did that for yeah, us. Look, look for Kelsey Sunderland's report as well. Um, yeah, it'll kind of give you a little bit of perspective as to um, location wise, what's going on with, with some of these sinkholes as well. So, uh, everybody for Amanda Holly with storm team eight, I'm JB Buena with WFLA now. Thanks so much for being with us here on stream. More to come tonight in our newscast and more to come on the WFLA app. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you soon.